Once again, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amin. My brothers and sisters, I will be speaking about some aspects of the life of the greatest of all messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we say he is the greatest of all messengers? Well, that is what Allah told us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only chosen him as the greatest of all messengers, but the most loved unto Allah, the best of creation. Like we always say, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has chosen five of his messengers above others. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, تِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ the messengers, we have raised some in level above others. So not all of them were of the same rank. So, you know, these messengers, these prophets, they were not of the same rank. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions five of them, and he mentions some of them in the Quran, some he doesn't mention in the Quran. Allah says, مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ from among these messengers, there are some whom we have related their stories to you and some whom we have not related their stories to you, so you wouldn't know them. Uh, amazing. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions five names in one verse. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who are known as Ulul Azmi min al Rusul. Those who were the most determined from among these messengers. They had the highest rank. They went through challenge upon challenge, uh, great challenges. And these challenges raised them in rank. If you look at the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah mentions him. Allah mentions Noah, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and, and Musa alayhi salam. So Isa, Musa, Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Ibrahim. Amazing. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. They went through difficulty, hardship, and I want to say something. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through the greatest hardship, the greatest difficulty, challenge upon challenge. I always say, when we're talking about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to realize Allah loved him the most. If Allah wanted, Allah could have actually facilitated his living on earth with the greatest of luxuries. But Allah wants us to know that when he loves you, it does not mean that he's going to shower upon you the luxuries of this world because those whom he loved more than you, he did not shower upon them the luxuries of this world, but he gave them contentment. Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, Glory be to Allah whom if he had willed, he could have made for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, much better than everything they've had. He would have made for you gardens beneath which rivers were flowing and palaces he would have given you. But Allah says, you know, they have belied the hour. They don't even believe in the hour. So if we take a look at technology and the advancement we have, this technology, if Allah wanted, he could have let it be at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But all this advancement and all this luxury and all this technology and everything, Allah kept it for later on. Imagine we believe firmly in every aspect of the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we haven't seen him with our eyes. The conviction in our hearts is even stronger than if we had seen him with our eyes. Meaning, we were not chosen to be from among the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet we're totally convinced more than if we had seen something with our own eyes. I might belie my eyes if I were to see something, but I will never belie that messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his message. So what is the uniqueness? Revelation revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such 
that there is no contamination in it. Allah says, we will take care of the Quran, we will protect it, we will ensure that it remains intact right up to the end. And that's exactly what happened. And if you look at the Quran today across the globe, there is one Mus'haf, one Quran. And subhanAllah, there might be a few dialects of reading it, it doesn't change the meaning, subhanAllah. And amazingly, even if I don't speak your language, you can actually correct me when I'm reciting the Quran, just by the fact that you're a Muslim who prays five daily prayers. Subhanallah. You would know some of these surahs off by heart. But let's get into the difficulties and hardship faced by the most loved unto Allah. And I've chosen this aspect of his life because we're going through a very, very difficult period, a unique time where coronavirus has come in and changed a lot of the norms that we had before it came in. And it seems to be uh, a semi long term change, perhaps who knows, may Allah protect us all and grant us return to life that is even better than what it was before. But more importantly, may Allah grant us a better relationship with him than ever before. Because even if life did not return to normal, but you have a better relationship with Allah, you have succeeded. And if life returns to better than normal, and you don't have a good relationship with Allah, then you have not succeeded. My brothers, my sisters, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bear in mind, best of creation, most noble of all prophets. His father passed away before he was born. Subhanallah. Allah chose for him to be born in a city and at a time when there was no advancement in terms of electricity, running water, the internet, mobile phones, motor vehicles, air aircraft, space jets, whatever else there might have been. But Allah favored him above everyone. He was born. When he was born, his father had already preceded or the death of his father had preceded his birth. So he was born an orphan. This is a consolation for all orphans. It is not because Allah is upset with you that you're an orphan. It is not because Allah does not love you and that's why he took your father away. No, perhaps he loves you more. Perhaps he loves you more. And that's why he took your father away. Subhanallah made you an orphan. And as Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grew a little bit older, do you know, he faced a hardship in Badia to Bani Sa'd when he was sent to Halima to Sa'diya, when he was sent to Halima, the wet nurse. And what happened is at a certain time, Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and there was the incident of the washing of the heart at that particular juncture when he was very young of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanAllah, he faced a difficulty, a hardship where he had to come back to his mother. And when he came back to his mother, a little while later, his mother passed away. He was only six years old, according to some of the narrations. So he stayed with his mother for about a year. According to the narrations, if he had come back at the age of five, most of the time he did not spend with his mother. And when he did, the mother then passed away when he was six years old, still very young. So no father. No mother, that is the most loved unto Allah. That difficulty and hardship did not mean that Allah didn't love him. Same applies to any one of us. If you faced hardship, difficulty, something happened to you, remember something. It does not mean Allah does not love you. Perhaps he loves you more than others. Take it in your stride and get closer to him. Thank Allah for whatever you do have. The hardships and challenges were faced by everyone. Subhanallah. More so those who were loved by Allah more. In Allah Ida Ahabba Abdanibtala. When Allah loves a slave, he tests him more and more and more. You gain close.